It's time, Marky Bilson, talking this time about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Give it to him, Angus. Always wanted this song. Well, I'm kind of conservative. And men. All right. The story came out around noontime. Ben Roethlisberger is going to be out for the season for the Pittsburgh Steelers, needs elbow surgery, and the initial reaction was disturbingly knee-jerk, I think, from so many in the media. Maybe it's uh, the sign of the Twitter Twitterverse. I don't know. But uh, first of all, he's been through as he played his last game. Nobody can make that assertion with any sort of knowledge at this time. How does the surgery go? Ben Roethlisberger doesn't even know this himself. It is far, far, far too early. I know it's a sexy speculation, but it is not a responsible one. Nobody knows the answer to that question. At best, the answer you would get there would be similar to the result of a coin flip and such. Uh, the other big reaction that I saw, oh, it's time to get rid of Ben Roethlisberger and go with Mason Rudolph from... Uh, let's wait and see how he does before we make Mason Rudolph into the next Dak Prescott and Roethlisberger into the next Tony Romo. What do you say? What do you say? Uh, oh, the Steelers aren't going to make the playoffs. Well, look. 0-2 with a backup quarterback is generally not the way most playoff teams want to start. But it's far too early to say that. And why would you say that? In fact, where would Mason Rudolph get anything but initial optimism based off of his first performance in a Steelers uniform, he moved the ball better in the second half than Roethlisberger did in the first. Now that's one half. Like I said, not enough time to grease the skids for Roethlisberger. And after 16 years in a league, he does not deserve to have his skids greased. However, it is, some, it is an indication of optimism. I do not understand where any criticism can come about of Mason Rudolph based off of his first initial performance. I'm told one sports talk show host in Pittsburgh was insistent that uh, Rudolph st stinks. Really? Really? Uh, let's go with that get rid of Ben and go with Rudolph sentiment. I, I do think, though, that there is something to that, and it is how Mike Tomlin has traditionally coached the Pittsburgh Steelers. And something I've really been critical of him over the years. I think he greases the skids for his veterans. Be it, you know, Charlie Batch, which is where I first noticed it, where it was everything he could do to try to push Charlie Batch out the door his last two seasons. And instead, all he did was start and win football games for him when called upon to do so, thanks to injuries to, oh, Dixon as well, Dennis Dixon as well as Byron Leftwich. Uh, but Mike Tomlin, be it Charlie Batch, you know, at the start of the decade, be it James Harrison more recently, does grease the skids for his vets. And I think that that is a bad look, and it's one of my great criticisms of Mike Tomlin. You'll never get me to believe that he is not less of a player's coach than Bill Belichick. Is he more personable? Absolutely. But here's what I think of as a play, a, uh, a player's coach. I think the quote-unquote Patriots way in which they'll pick up 
let's say, a veteran like a Harrison or even an Antonio Brown. But there have been plenty of veterans. I mean, Junior Seau, uh, Randy Moss, you know, just a LeGarrette Blunt. There's another former Steeler that they will pick up perhaps from free agency, perhaps off the scrap heap, and make productive as if almost like George o. Allen's old over-the-hill gang. Okay, so here's what I say. Now, Belichick may be the surliest man in the world. However, he gives the veteran and respects the veteran's career by giving him a job. Tomlin cuts him before he can play out of that job. Did it to James Harrison twice. The second time James Harrison was starting the Super Bowl after he was cut. I mean, wait a minute here. And so, you'll never get me to say that Tomlin is more of a player's coach than Bill Belichick. After all, Belichick gives jobs, Tomlin takes them away. So I've been a Tomlin critic for a while, and... I do think, however, what the ultimate result of this injury is going to be is that it makes sure that Tomlin is going to be the coach in 2020. Because if the Steelers lose, then he'll have the built-in excuse, Roethlisberger was hurt. I never had a chance. But if he wins with Mason Rudolph, then he's the genius. Then he's the guy that didn't need Ben Roethlisberger. Hey, Chuck Knoll, he needed Terry Bradshaw. Bill Cower, he really needed Roethlisberger, too. We can debate that. Other division titles were won with other quarterbacks, but not Super Bowls. I'll give you that. But division titles were. But still, it makes this season more of a precursor for the season to come. The seasons to come, excuse me. Now, let's just look at the future of the AFC. Future of the AFC after Tom Brady and Bill Belichick go, which is probably at most another three years. Brady says he wants to coach until he's 45. Do you really think that a 70-year-old Bill Belichick wants to go it without Tom Brady? Really? Okay. So what is the future of the AFC after Brady and Belichick? Well, Chiefs will have Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. That's pretty good. Ravens, you know, I didn't think that much of Jackson. I thought he's going to scramble too much and all that. And I still have that, you know, and I don't like the scrambling quarterback. But outside of that playoff game against the Chargers, and yes, three yards passing in three quarters does raise my antenna, and it does, you know, put the flashing red light on. Uh, but the Ravens did win the division last year with Jackson, and uh, they're 2-0 this year. So, Jackson and Harbaugh for the future? Yeah, that seems like it'll be in place for several more years. Same with Baker Mayfield, Freddie Kitchens, absolutely. And then, wait a minute, Mason Rudolph and Mike Tomlin? Absolutely, you could see that. That act that we're going to see here might not be a future look-see for 2020 for the Steelers, but it will more than likely be the look-see for 2022, when, yes, by that time, we can yeah probably say that Brady and Belichick will have both retired, and then, yeah, the act that Rudolph and Tomlin will be going up against will be... Mahomes and Reed, Jackson and Harbaugh, Mayfield and Kitchens. So you look at that, and that's where this season may be actually a precursor for the times ahead. 14 games to find out what they will be. I'm Marky Bilson.